Hello guys, welcome back to our podcast. This is Tada Kenya podcast and uh, today we are discussing about uh, maternal health and child care. And uh, before we get into the discussion, I let uh, these beautiful colleagues introduce themselves, starting from the far end. Hi beautiful people, my good name is Christina Demboere, I staff at Tada Kenya and I'm happy to be here. Hi everyone, my name is Cyprus Olewe, a staff at Tada Kenya. Welcome. Morning everyone, uh, I'm Immaculate Aching, a nurse by profession. I'm here to share with you about maternal and child health. Very welcome. Mm-hmm. And uh, before we get into the discussion, uh, maybe Emma, you just give us a brief of what our maternal health is and child care. Thank you for that opportunity. Uh, when we talk about maternal health, uh, we majorly we focus on the general well-being of the mother whenever she comes she becomes pregnant and throughout the pregnancy during delivery and even postpartumly postpartumly here means after the delivery of the baby and when we talk about when we talk about the child health majorly you focus on the well-being of the baby mm-hmm. when the baby is still in utero that is in, within the with, be, sorry when we talk about the utero it means that the baby is still in the uterus yeah, so uh, you have to check on the well-being of this baby and even after delivery, after she or he has been delivered. And uh, as you speak from uh, a nurse angle and also a mother's angle, just give us a navigation of uh, the whole process from uh, pregnancy, childbirth, and how to manage pain after uh, the delivery and maybe things to do with postpartum depression. Thank you once more. Uh, when you want, now you want to talk about pregnancy, this is the time that the mother, uh, there is uh, the fetus, yeah? the mm-hmm. baby grows in the mother's womb. Eh? Mm-hmm. So during this period, the mother has to be screened for any, um, any infection, uh, mm-hmm. any other thing that may cause complication during the pregnancy and even after she has delivered. So we have what we call the prenatal care, which is, which is also the antenatal care. Mm-hmm. So during the antenatal care, the mm-hmm. mother comes to the clinic, so we check on the blood pressures, we check on the sugar levels, we check on the weight. All these may attribute to complications. Yeah. Now, when the mother is, uh, uh, maybe she had, pre- before she became pregnant, if she had some uh, medical condition, the mm-hmm. existing conditions, mm-hmm. like the blood pressure, Obviously, when she's pregnant, we have the hormones that uh, sustains the, the uh, pregnancy. Mm-hmm. So during this pregnancy period, you find that the hormones will always elevate everything and that will always cause more complications. Mm-hmm. Right? Apart from that, uh, we can also do some blood tests. So we call this the ANC profile. So during the blood test investigations, we check on the blood group of the mother, mm-hmm. we check on the blood level of the mother. Mm-hmm. Ideally, a pregnant mother should have, uh, she should not have below 11 grams per deciliter, that is the hemoglobin level. Mm-hmm. And uh, apart from that, we talk about the other uh, infections like the HIV, you know. And when the mother is pregnant and she's HIV positive, and there is no intervention that has been taken, Maybe she has not been given the preventive measures to ensure that the baby does not get the infection. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes a problem during delivery and even after delivery because this this baby Mm -hmm. is HIV exposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we also check on the syphilis during the screening, that is the antenatal period. Mm -hmm. Uh, When the baby is uh, in the utero, we find that the mother and the baby, they are connected to the placenta. So there are a lot of things that uh, happens, and uh, it is through the placenta that maybe if the mother is infected, the baby is automatic- will automatically be mm-hmm. infected too. Yeah. So a question on that. So uh-huh. if the mother has syphilis, uh-huh. it can be uh, transmitted to the kid through the placenta. Thank you. Ah. Wow. Hey, that's, that's new. <laughs> that's new. I, I, I don't know you think it's just for HIV and AIDS. But exactly, I didn't know that things. To, so, is it syphilis or uh, uh, even the other sexual transmitted disease? Uh, when you talk of others, uh, some they, they, the baby becomes infected during delivery. Mm-hmm. Like now, when you talk of the, the words, when you talk of the neonatal tetanus, mm-hmm. and that is why we also give mothers uh, tetanus during the pregnancy. Mm-hmm. It will protect the mother as well as the baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, so you've talked about uh, uh, the maternal health and child care uh, mm -hmm. as something that starts immediately when uh, someone is pregnant. Mm -hmm. But then uh, to Christine and Cyprus, they have been to the field and all that. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember one day I was with them and uh, some of these, are especially uh, teen mothers or uh, young mothers, mm -hmm. they, they, are, they are afraid uh, to, to tell their parents or whoever is uh, their caregiver that they are pregnant. Mm -hmm. So you find that in such a case, they don't get any care, they don't go to the clinic, uh, they don't uh, maybe have some advice on how to navigate throughout the process. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe you give us a picture in terms of awareness. Do you think that uh, these young mothers or our teen mothers uh, have the awareness that uh, whatever they are going through or uh, uh, throughout the process that these whole things are really important and uh, that they should be considered. So just give us a picture of the awareness out there. Okay, thank you. Uh, I realize that uh, um, most of the teen, mom, teen mothers are not aware. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, because uh, they are not exposed. Even are you talk, you say that their parents... Sometimes they are afraid. They can't say they are pregnant. So when I am mother to Adi parents on Ashtukia, oh, Tumbume. They don't share, yes. most of them. Yeah, and also, uh, I think most of them also fear going to the facilities uh, because uh, they feel they may be uh, discriminated or stigmatized by the healthcare providers. And mm -hmm. that Emma. She's <laughs> here, she'll tell us. <laughs> Is it true? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. That uh, they will be abused, or some somehow they will uh, they will talk ill of them. That uh, you at this age, at 13 years, you're pregnant. So mm -hmm. maybe they fear that. That's mm -hmm. why you find that uh, they need some of this antenatal uh, uh, care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I can say that stigma plays a very big role in creating awareness, or for someone to be informed. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. just as Cyprus has mentioned, they fear going to the facility to get these services when they are pregnant because they fear mm -hmm. I will be stigmatized, I will be discriminated, I am young, I am not supposed to have a kid but it has already happened. Mm -hmm. It has already happened and the more we we keep quiet about it, you hide it from your parents or from your guardians, mm -hmm. you expose yourself to a lot of dangers that will affect you and your unborn during and after your pregnancy. So a good thing Emma is here. You, you need to clarify something. Is it true? <laughs> is it true? <laughs> uh, okay, if maybe I can say something about that. Mm -hmm. You know, generally, mm -hmm. now if maybe I leave the nursing part of it. Mm -hmm. Generally, as human beings, each and every person has his or her own attitude, yeah? Mm -hmm. So whenever a teenage come to you, comes to you and then she says that I'm pregnant and I'm 14 years old that time, uh, it is not that uh, she has not done something bad or what, but you can actually create this awareness through. The, right now, we have uh, what we call uh, community health promoters. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, initially they were the CHVs. CHVs. Yeah, so they, they they tend to go to houses. They look for these mothers. They talk to them. Of course, they have some information concerning mm -hmm. their, their health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they talk to them, and then after that, they do a referral, and then they come to the, the facility. So assume that this, the adolescent has been met at the household level, mm -hmm. and the CHP has talked to this mother and the teenage mother. Maku, when she'll be coming out to the facility, mm -hmm. she has she will have the confidence. Yeah. She'll have the self-esteem and feel like now uh, it is not bad to become pregnant. But again, you know when uh, you become pregnant at adolescent uh, period, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you tend to expose yourself to many complications. Yeah, mm -hmm. like for example, uh, uh, at a teenage level or uh, the adolescent level, you'll find that uh, some of your uh, the organs, yeah, like the birth canal, it is not uh, well developed for you to to give birth to the baby. So it mm -hmm. will depend, but it depends also with human beings, each and every person, individual based, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so should that happen, you find that this mother, the teenage mother will be taken for a cesarean section instead of having just a normal deliver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's something that should start from uh, the community level. Not not us blaming the, the hospital or the health facility. It's something that should start from uh, 
the community level where the awareness is being created and all that exactly and uh, even currently whatever we're doing we have what is called a community dialogue where we go to the community we talk to mothers so mm -hmm. we can just choose on a topic mm -hmm. if it is pregnancy it is what then we we, we talk to them we give them the inf information after you have disseminated this information mm -hmm. the, the mothers or whoever you talk to will mm -hmm. be aware you will be aware of what is taking place and what he or she should be doing and back to you emma how important is uh, parental care and child care uh, it is very significant mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. because if you do not take care of this mother if you do not take care of this baby uh, what will happen they mm -hmm. will be exposed to so many things mm -hmm. yeah to start with uh, if maybe i can just go directly to the mother if this mother is not well taken care of during her pregnancy period, maybe it is her first time. She doesn't know anything to do with pregnancy. Yes. She doesn't know anything to like do with this lady. <laughs> she doesn't know anything to do with uh -huh. uh, the symptoms mm -hmm. that she may have during her pregnancy. Something mm -hmm. like severe headache. Mm -hmm. She may feel like, ah, it's just a normal headache. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Maybe she's bleeding. She's mm -hmm. like, ah, maybe I'm just having some sort of sporting, you know. But if you take her through the pregnancy process, mm -hmm. and that is why we have the antenatal care, mm -hmm. and that is why we also have pre-conception care. This is before now we become pregnant. Ooh. Yeah. Before you become, you become pregnant. Yes. Oh, I think. Do we need that? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, no. That was just a baby. No, honestly, I need, I need to get. <laughs> so there's a care before you get that pregnant. That. Yes. Okay. Let's say you. And your partner mm -hmm. you know, are planning to become pregnant. Oh, okay. It is your first time. Uh -huh. You don't know how to go about it. Mm -hmm. You don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So you come to the facility and you present yourself. You say, um, um, I want to become pregnant. Mm -hmm. So we want to have a child or a baby. Mm -hmm. What should we do? Mm -hmm. So during this time, we'll tell you what to do. And for example, we'll tell you that you should, as you prepare to come for the antenatal, that is the, mm -hmm. now after you become pregnant, yes. you should have some hematinics. Uh, majorly, we talk of uh, aphasia, that is mm -hmm. the folic, the iron, and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you check this, uh, mm -hmm. before you become pregnant, it will prepare your uterine, your muscles, and everything. Mm -hmm. And so, when you become pregnant, it will prevent the neural tube defects. Mm -hmm. This one majorly affects the baby. That is when now you find someone has given birth to a baby where by there is some hole here, maybe the baby has a big head and a small baby small body mm -hmm. or a big body but a small head, such mm -hmm. kind of things they, mm -hmm. can, they, they they tend to happen because you did not get the prompt care that you're supposed to to get. So it's always advisable. <laughs> it not, so it's it's always advisable when you want to have a kid, you go for a the? preconception care. Preconception yeah, care. Before. Precon oh. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you mentioned that at times someone would give birth, and um, Toto and Toka had a big head. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We were in the field some time, uh -huh. and then uh -huh. uh, sorry, Simpros gave a really good explanation. Uh -huh. I think um, one of the young mothers we were talking to. Um, one of them said that they was it they don't like going to the facility to take this um, for the anti antenatal clinic mm -hmm. you know, before mm -hmm. before giving birth. Mm -hmm. They don't like going there to get this um, medication because there's a lot of meats um, associated with this whole mm -hmm. medication mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. clinics. And some of the meats near to a baby is given birth to when a baby is given when a baby is delivered is delivered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. They come out with a big head, mm -hmm. um, and just some physical complications. And now I'm glad that you've also explained what yeah. Cyprus did the other day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is actually very important that people go for these clinics before giving birth. Another thing, let me just take you back, Kidogo. You've mentioned the sporting and bleeding. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there's something called critic pregnancy, mm -hmm. where someone is pregnant, and they don't know they are pregnant, they just bleed, they just menstruate normally. So mm. is this menstruation or is it bleeding? And what is this bleeding when someone is pregnant? Okay. And uh, huh, okay. That's new. Yeah. Or sporting is just bleeding but in small quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the, the bleeding, yes, but now in small quantity. Mm -hmm. Now, if uh, you're sure that this this mother is pregnant and still she is sporting or she is bleeding, that means there is a problem. But she cannot menstruate 
every month like an unpregnant yeah. woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So should this happen, you will always advise this mother to see a gynecological doctor. Yeah. So investigation will be done, ultrasound will be done to see where the bleeding is coming from and the cause actually that is the main point of our management. You have to attack the cause, the root cause of the, whatever is taking place. So after you've done so, uh, you will prevent some other complications that may arise later mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when we talk of postpartum depression, uh, how does that affect uh, how a mother, um, how does that affect child care? All right. Uh, the word depression, it means that you're not physically stable. Mm-hmm. You're not mentally stable. Right? Mm-hmm. Everything around you is just abnormal. Yes? You are going. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. assume I've given birth and I'm depressed. There must be something causing depression in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe I am from a low socioeconomic. Uh, Back 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 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I cannot attain to get the diapers, I cannot get the baby's clothing. After I've given birth of course I should use the sanitary pads, yeah. I cannot afford all these. So meaning I'm not okay upstairs. Mm-hmm. So that can lead to depression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Loneliness. Maybe you've given birth during your pregnancy, even before your pregnancy, you are having good moments with your partner. Then after you've delivered, maybe you had they issues. Swim. <laughs> yeah, you had issues, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they decided to walk away. So you are here alone. With them. Oh no! Yeah. Mm-hmm. So such mm-hmm. kind of things mm-hmm. will always lead to depression. So should that happen, mm-hmm. do you want to tell me that I'll be able to take good care of my kid? You cannot. Mm-hmm. You cannot. So, uh, if maybe someone is lonely, if maybe someone is from a low uh, socioeconomic uh, background, mm-hmm. you can just look for a way to help this mother. Mm-hmm. So maybe if uh, she's lonely, you look for a, a close relative, you mm-hmm. look for a close friend, anyone that she is comfortable with sharing with them, mm-hmm. the information, then from there you see how to help her. If it is beyond that, then maybe she can be taken to the hospital for other management. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, at the facility level and mm-hmm. uh, at the community level from mm-hmm. the team at Stada, mm-hmm. what are some of the measures that you've put uh, forward to ensure that you raise awareness, especially to young mothers who are, to new mothers, sorry, who are mm-hmm. not yet uh, exposed to motherhood? I think awareness should be created even to those who have not yet. Not yet, okay. Not, yet. not only new mothers, but yeah. still. Everyone. Yeah. So that by mm-hmm. the time you're pregnant, at mm-hmm. least you have an idea of, of what, what motherhood, yeah. Yeah, sure. So what are some of those measures that you've put through Astada Kenya to ensure that uh, you raise that awareness? Community engagement, mm-hmm. community engagement, community engagement talking to young girls, talking to women, talking to men. Community is everyone, yeah. not just as the that, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Anything to add on? Uh, I think uh, as Stada Kenya, we are also planning to raise awareness uh, through social media about uh, postpartum depression. This will help uh, those who are planning to get pregnant and also those who are pregnant and the mm-hmm. community at large. Uh-huh. And uh, at the facility level, Emma? Okay, at the facility level, uh, we have what we call group NC, that is group mm-hmm. antenatal clinic, yeah? Mm-hmm. So during the group NC, you know, even if I'm pregnant and maybe I have a sister or a cousin who is not pregnant somewhere, mm-hmm. after I've been given the information, I will go home and disseminate to others who are not here. Mm-hmm. So we do that and uh, community level also, uh, as much as we do it here, we also do it through the, the CHPs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and apart from the CHPs, as the nurses, we sometimes take our time and we go to the community mm-hmm. and we give out the information concerning everything so that whenever they become pregnant, they are fully aware of what is taking place and what should take place during that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, as we conclude this whole conversation, uh, I would like you to speak at a professional. Oh, you have some questions, mm-hmm. or she has some. She has something to add on. Uh, before we conclude, we also we are also covering a childcare. So uh, let's immaculate 
a brief us on breastfeeding, mm -hmm. uh, a specifically exclusive breastfeeding. All right, thank you. Uh, when we talk about exclusive breastfeeding, mm -hmm. it means there should be no any other complementary feed. You should not give any other thing apart from the breast milk. Mm -hmm. So this baby should breastfeed immediately after she uh, the, immediately after the delivery. The baby should be attached to the to the breast within the first one hour of delivery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the whole one hour. Okay. Okay. No, just no. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, yeah. okay, I didn't mean. Uh -huh. I didn't mean like uh, she. Sh the baby should be breastfeeding for one hour. For one hour. <laughs> but the breastfeeding should be initiated. You should start it within an, within an hour. hour. Oh, now yeah, I get it. I meant, yeah. <laughs> within one hour. Mm -hmm. Because uh, during the utero, the baby will be feeding through the placenta, whatever the mother is taking in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then after she's been delivered or the baby has been delivered, it mm -hmm. means that now the placenta has been detached from the mother. The yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, she has to, the baby has to be bre breastfed. Mm -hmm. So when it is exclusive breastfeeding, you don't even anything else have a, as I've said before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from birth to six months of age, mm -hmm. it should just be breast milk. But there are some other things that may make this mother not to breastfeed the baby. Mm -hmm. Maybe the health of the mother herself. Mm -hmm. Because delivery comes with complications. Mm -hmm. What if uh, this mother delivered well, then afterwards, maybe hours later, she complicates through hemorrhages. Yeah? Uh, she bleeds and so she cannot uh, contain that energy to breastfeed the baby. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Mm -hmm. You look for something at, at the facility, you will have to help this baby so that the baby does not go into uh, hypoglycemic. That is when the sugar levels are that low. Mm -hmm. yes. I thought you were going to say hunger strike. <laughs> <laughs> A new <word>. very, very, <laughs> very very, very informative. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. mm. Hypo glycemic. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Hypo means low now when the sugars are low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hyper is when the sugars are uh -huh. high. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, do you guys have anything to ask? More questions on the same? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, you've already talked of a, a scenario where the mother has given birth uh, with complications. Uh -huh. How about a scenario where? Uh, the mother claims that uh, the child that she has insufficient milk for this baby. Like now, she wants to introduce uh, porridge. She wants to introduce ugali at three ah, months. Ugali. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they ugali at three months. Yeah, yeah they they make it. Uh, that, that, that that's punishment. Uh, for sure, it is uh, because uh, when the baby is delivered. Uh, we have the digestive system. Mm -hmm. So by this time, the baby's digestive system is not well, it's not mature enough mm -hmm. to digest all that the baby is taking in. And that is why breast milk is the, the one which is preferred because it is easily digestible mm -hmm. and it has everything that the baby needs, inclusive of water. You know, some women will tell you, oh, you can magic, hakuna magic. The breast milk has water. It has everything. After mm -hmm. six months, that is when now uh, the gut imekuwa imekuwa sasa matua unaizampea these other feeds, the complementary feeds, mm -hmm. or the family feeds like porridge. Mm -hmm. At seven months, around seven months, you can now start porridge. Yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. Bananas, mashed potatoes, you know, you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Now, now you know. Now she knows. She knows. This topic is so uh, mind blowing. Because yeah. I feel yeah. we, we can't we can't say I can relate. Like yeah. you can't relate. Everything <laughs> seems new. Very new. Very new. I'm sure even yeah. those who will be watching and have already given birth will learn be like, a couple of things. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and then uh, I think she also asked about the pain management during yeah. the yeah. delivery. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happens during delivery? There is the contraction of the uterine muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as the uterine muscles contract, they help the cervix to dilate. The cervix mm -hmm. is the bottom part of the uterus. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. In our biology, yeah. we yeah. have that diagram. Yeah. Yeah. I can <laughs> see. <laughs> you can see. I that. can picture. So the base mm -hmm. of the uterus that is the the, the cervix. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about dilatation, that is now the opening of the of the cervix. 
as it dilates, it thins in a quite slim mm -hmm. so that it will make that room for the baby to, to pass through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what call what causes the the pain. That mm -hmm. it is the contraction, the uterine contraction, yeah, mm -hmm. that causes the pain. So during pregnancy, since it is a physiological thing or mm -hmm. it is natural, it mm -hmm. has to take place that way. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the non pharmacological aspect of the management. So during this period you can have someone like the partner or a friend to massage or rub the back of his woman. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Help this mother to walk through the room, talk to her, at least uh, she becomes easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she doesn't feel discomfort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is very important because I see it on some movies, maybe they're, the like they're and having, I think it's just they're someone back. showing love. Like this is my my, my wife. This is that therapy. Wow. It is a management. Yeah. It's it a is. pain management it's it's strategy. strategy. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Now you, you don't use any So if someone uh, rubs your back you feel like you are now okay. Yes. <laughs> when it comes. <laughs> so so the, the pain, pain goes. goes. <laughs> yeah, it goes. Huh? It's a kind of soothing. Um, yeah, yeah, if you do that, yeah. just mm -hmm. like if you're having the normal cramps, what do you mm -hmm. normally do? Some they rub their stomach. Right? Yeah, you massage slowly, gently, yeah. Then you find that she relieved. Yes. Oh. Oh, we also have warm baths. So, but now that will depend mm. on the level of the facility. Mm. Yeah, like uh, in uh, maybe you talk of the government facilities, uh, some you may not find a bathtub there mm -hmm. with warm water. Yeah. But should there be, then the mother is supposed to be there. So, a warm bath also helps. Exactly. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> when that time comes, I'll be. I feel like we should have a part two of this. <laughs> There's a lot we cannot cover right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So, again, uh, as we conclude, now we are serious as we conclude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we should have more episodes on the oh. same so that we can enlighten more young uh, mothers, mothers to be yeah, and yeah. the new mothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have something to ask? Yes. Please go ahead. Okay, to Emma. Have mm -hmm. you experienced uh, this uh, issue of plastic teething among the infants in the facility? Okay. Uh, plastic what? Teeth. Teeth. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when the baby is born, mm -hmm. as a mother, you should be keen on your baby. Should you see anything that is abnormal to you, the best thing is to take the baby to the hospital. And uh, you can take the baby for a pediatric review, mm -hmm. yeah. So or a dental review because now she's talking of the plastic teeth. But ideally, so uh, wait, there are some kids who are born with like plastic <laughs> teeth. teeth. <laughs> or just explain it because I am. Uh, you know, I don't want to be sure. It's not that it's something which is there. It's something that has been proven. Something that has been documented. Mm -hmm. But uh, when the baby is born, mm -hmm. uh, when you check on the gums, some people will see like there are some whitish things. But ideally, they are not the teeth as per se. Okay. Yes. Okay. It is just the gums. Mm -hmm. And now that is the reason as to why we advise that they go specifically to a qualified doctor. Let them visit a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. Let them visit uh, a dentist, so that uh, the 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 the, <laughs> the plastic <laughs> teeth issue should be ruled out. Yeah. So they they look exactly like teeth. Personally, I've never seen this. What I've seen, it is just the gums. Yeah. But they have some white thing. Yes. That like a teeth That's that the But mm -hmm. now people tend to believe that they are teeth. But no. they are not. But they are not. I, I also mm -hmm. want to believe they are not. They are not. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> <laughs> they are not. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Ooh. Okay. So uh, as we conclude, uh, as at a professional level, uh -huh. I would like you to emphasize more on the importance of our maternal health and uh -huh. child care uh -huh. to everyone who is watching uh, out there. All right. Uh, to our viewers, uh, all I can tell you is that uh, whenever you become pregnant, whenever you're preparing to become pregnant, ensure that you visit a health facility. Ensure that you have a birth companion. A birth companion here refers to anyone who can help you through your pregnancy period and mm -hmm. even after you deliver. So, 
let me interrupt a birth companion uh -huh. can it be your mom Thank your you. so yes. anyone who can take you through that yes. process uh -huh. anyone mm -hmm. and during that period we have what is called individual birth plan so individual birth plan comprises of now the birth companion mm -hmm. the mother mm -hmm. and the mother will be delivering at mm -hmm. meaning they have to choose a hospital so choosing a hospital, you have to check on maybe the distance. Mm -hmm. You have to check on uh, how to get there, transportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since we have complications that no one will always plan for, you cannot call on plan that now tomorrow I'll, I'll have this such kind of a, a complication. Mm -hmm. So you should have some financial, some funds yeah, with you so that should anything happen that wasn't anticipated, mm -hmm. you can be helped. Yes. And uh, on the nutrition pier, uh, you, ha you have to eat well during your pregnancy. Because initially, before you became pregnant, you were one person. Maybe yeah. you need a couple of plates and you're done. But now that you're two or even more, because some people have to eat three plates and all that, yeah? uh, whatever you be taking will be doubled or even uh, it will be more or tripled. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you should hydrate well, take a lot of water. Mm -hmm. If right now you are an unpregnant and you're taking three meals, so you can take some two other meals in between. Yes. That was really informative. Uh, if you have, do you have something to add, guys, before we? Wow. Hey. <laughs> that was really so informative. Today, I am today years old when I just realized pregnancy is not just about conceiving antenatal care clinics, mm -hmm. giving birth, and then life continues. There's more to it. I've, I've really, really learned, learned a lot. Emma here. Mm -hmm. I have learned. I hope you have also learned something. And just be um, on the look, yeah? If you feel your, your expectant, like just quite a rather. Yeah, thank you. Cyprus? Uh, thank you to our viewers. Uh, if you have anything related to maternal and child health that we've not covered, you can comment below, then we'll tackle it in our next episode. Thank you. That was really informative and uh, keep the conversations going. If you have something that uh, you think we should discuss on the same, uh, kindly put it down on the comment section. Uh, don't forget to share, follow and subscribe. And that is all from us at Stada Kenya Podcast. See you next time. Bye. Bye.